Tankers, Bonsai Duck here. Today we have an interview with Middle Age Noob. For those of you who know Middle Age, he's a French auto light, auto loader light player. Uh, plays a lot of those. Um, he was working on some mediums, but generally you will always find him in an auto loading French light. <laughs> uh, generally in the lower tiers, uh, you know, tier sixes and, and, and up. But um, anyway, um, Middle Age had, had agreed to do an interview with me, and he's got a lot of good things to say. So this might be a little bit longer than normal, uh, but I felt that it was important that you got to hear what he had to say. So let's go to the interview. All right. So welcome, Tankers. Today we have Middle Age Noob. Middle Age, say hello. Hello, YouTube. <laughs> I'm going to ask you, where did you come up with your 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 uh, your your call sign? Well, I mean, uh, you know, I I, uh, I was thinking a, a little bit about what I wanted to call myself. This is actually my second World of Tanks account. I created another one uh, quite a while ago, but mm -hmm. um, you know, I was thinking uh, I wasn't happy with the uh, the name that I came up with then, and I thought, well, I want to have a name that's descriptive that kind of says something about me, but doesn't, you know, give too much away. And, you know, middle-aged is definitely me and <laughs> I'm certainly a noob. So, you know, middle-aged noob seems pretty natural. I get a lot of positive reaction actually from it uh, <laughs> online in chat. You know, a lot of people remark on that handle. Oh, well, it's, uh, it's one of the unique ones, I, I will admit, you know, um, but uh, when did you start? gaming you know just computer games in, in particular well yeah i mean um i was listening to your interview with non amandas today and you were talking about playing star trek on the mainframes uh -huh. way back in the day so uh you know that kind of that's kind of the pattern that i got into i uh you know my kids are all digital natives i call myself a uh, an early immigrant to, <laughs> to digital i got i got involved in uh computers when i was in high school and I used to go around to the local university and pester people for access to to the computers at the university, you know, joined a, uh, a computer club. And, uh, you know, so I was playing Star Trek on the mainframes. And then uh, um, as soon as uh, it became possible, as soon as, you know, sort of more personal computers came out, I couldn't afford, you know, one of the Commodore 64s or anything, but a friend and I went in on a uh, on one of the early Ataris. So. Uh -huh. We were uh, playing some of the, you know, Atari 400, Atari 800 type console games. So yeah. I did that as kind of a teenager, young adult. But then I, I moved away from computer games for a couple of year, decades, actually. I uh, went to university, started my career, uh, started my family. And then, um, you know, as my children started growing up, they got into computer games. And I, I remember giving my, my eldest son a hard time about all his computer game time, he was playing World of Tanks. He said, Dad, you should try World of Tanks. <laughs> so so uh, I gave it a try, and he's now moved on, doesn't play the game anymore, but but I'm still playing. What was it that got you hooked? Well, like I say, it was my son that uh, that got me started out on it. But, um, you know, again, kind of harking back to your interview with Mon Amandus, you know, I think probably people of our generation, you know, um, uh, we were all kind of interested in in the military and the Second World War and stuff. You know, I remember mm -hmm. as a as a teenager being fascinated by all the histories of the Second World War and you know reading magazines and books about it and that sort of thing. You know, I was actually more into the into the into the fighter planes than I was into the armor mm -hmm. uh, or the ships for that matter. It was never really the the tanks that were that were interesting to me, but. Um, you know, the whole Second World War, I think, kind of resonates a bit more with with our generation, maybe than than the younger bunch. So, you know, it kind of it kind of touched on something in me, uh, uh, an interest in that kind of era of things. I guess the other part of it is, is that um, um, what I find really appealing, we can talk a bit more about that is, is, um, you know, sort of the uh, uh, a few different things like the multiplayer notion of it you know non amandus was talking about trying to outwit opponents you know getting in the mind of opponents so there's a you know there's a, a player versus player element to it there's a, a mechanical and technical element to it you know knowing about how the different game mechanics work there's a positional approach there's a, a reacting to what happens in the game approach and and to be totally frank you know all of those things i think 
outweigh uh, the importance of of the twitch skills, the the purely mechanical point and shoot type skills, mm-hmm. which you know somebody my age <laughs> doesn't really have so much of anymore. So you know, I found it was a game that that uh, that that checked a lot of boxes for me. So as you were playing, I mean, did you just automatically pick the game up, or or was there a period of time where you decided you needed to you needed to improve your skill sets in order to quit getting, I guess, bent or twist or salty or whatever. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, I when I first started playing, I just played entirely naively and you know wasn't really paying attention to the forums or the videos or anything else. You know, I just sort of fire the game up and launch a tank and and see what happened. Mm-hmm. And you know, um, you know, my approach to researching stuff was. You know, if I was in battle and getting torn apart by something, well, then that was probably the next tank that I was going to go looking for. Right. You know, uh, always thinking that that you know somebody else has got a better tank. So, um, you know, that was uh, I, certainly when I when I first got into the game, I wasn't paying a, a great deal of attention to it. But you know, as I as I as I played more and started to think like, well, how is it that you know I'm getting shot by somebody I can't see? You know, how come they're penning me, but I can't pen them back? You know, we've got the same tanks, but I'm still doing worse than (laughs) than they are in in the same tank. You know, how does that all work? You know, that's when I started to delve into the research. You know, what are crew skills? What are the penetration mechanics? What are the vision mechanics? And, you know, um, as I mentioned, you know, I've, I've always, I've had a technical background. I've always had an interest in in how things work, what what makes things tick. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, you know, um, when I wasn't um, uh, playing video games, you know, I played a lot of role playing games or board games or, you know, even bridge or cribbage mm-hmm. and, you know, working out, um, you know, probabilities and, and the mechanics has always been something that, that's really been of an interest to me. Oh, okay. So you know, I sort of got into that aspect of, of World of Tanks. Okay. All right. And then how did you go about improving your skills? Was I mean, just diving into the forums, reading the wiki? I mean, you had mentioned you, 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 you um, followed a, a YouTube channel. Yeah. I mean, so, I mean, there are a couple of things there. I mean, first off, I... I wouldn't say I've gotten that good yet. I mean, um, oh, no. frankly, I, I feel like I'm still learning. Um, but, you know, I do feel like I've kind of made a, a breakthrough. I mean, you know, I, I took up the game later in life. I'm in my late 50s now. I play mm-hmm. on a primarily on a on a laptop that doesn't even do full HD video. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so. Um, yeah, I, I started watching videos. I started digging in the forums. I started digging into the mechanics. And I got to say that, um, you know, uh, what I what I came to learn was that I'm also easily distracted. I, I don't like long, drawn out um, uh, encounters. I get very impatient, which leads to a lot of um, early deaths in a lot of cases. So I kind of got drawn to to light tank play because um, for me. The combination of mobility and um, uh, camo, and the reliance on positioning, and you know the need to understand both the maps and uh, the the tactical situation, as well as you know the vision mechanics. That that kind of made it all very very attractive to me. Mm-hmm. So you know at that point, what I did is as I started getting more and more into light tanks, I started learning, trying to follow more and more people that that were playing light tanks. And, you know, there were certainly a few people that I, I found early on, uh, four tankers and dog, uh, did a lot of work on, on light tank work. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a guy who doesn't, who doesn't stream or do YouTube anymore. Zevin, who, who was really, really good at providing good advice on this, but I kind of stumbled upon this one guy whom I'm hoping you're going to put in your, in the, in the comments or, mm-hmm. or, or put a link in or, yeah. or, a guy by the name of dread shells. Um, he's got a, a YouTube channel, Dread Shells Gaming, and he's just um, he just plays uh, light tanks the way that I would like to be able to play light tanks. Um, you know, a real commitment to to the scouting role. He's not just um, 
I shouldn't say just, um, you know, they're, you know, the EBR 105 players or the, or, or the others who, who a light tank is, is a, you know, just a very fast um, gun platform. You know, he, he's much more into the scout, uh, the scouting role, which is something that I find really interesting and appealing. And so when I stumbled upon him, you know, uh, prior to 918 and the great scout nerf, as I describe it, um, he put out a series <laughs> of um, uh, videos on scouting locations on different maps. He was doing weekly series on on scouting tactics, auto loaders, non auto loaders, on how to play the vision games. And you know, he he's just, I guess, you know, my light tank idol, if you will. I wish he would do more YouTube videos, frankly. Um, you know, um, I, I've spoken to him in chat on his Discord channel or on Twitch, and you know. He never really got a, a very big following on YouTube, and he found the the creation of the videos quite um, arduous. Mm-hmm. And so he kind of he he does more. He relies more on streaming, I guess, now to be to be in connection with the community. But you know, he doesn't stream that often. Kind of two or three times a week. He's not like Sircon or Skill or people like this that are you know seem to be on twenty four seven. Right, right, right. I, I think you know there are people that that play a certain tank uh, a certain class of tank very well I, I find myself as being more drawn to the mediums and you you know based upon the videos that i've done for you and and and, and uh, are definitely a, 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 a other than the french autoloader <laughs> you're definitely a, a light to 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 heavy light taking the barask into into consideration there that you know that seems to be your niche and so when i want to know more about lights i'll be honest with you i'll watch your videos again well yeah and and you know as i say i find you know those sort of mechanics questions you know i i've gone through the wikis reading you know sort of everything i can about this um you know read all the forum postings on on how vision mechanics works um you know all the debates on whether this bush or that bush works how much you get from a particular bush and of course you and i had gone into the training room that time and kind of looked at at some of this ourselves to see how it works. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I just find that 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 quite appealing. But the other side of it is, is that, um, you know, very early on in my World of Tanks career, I learned that, you know, there's those who know vision mechanics and then those who die. So, <laughs> you know, it was really, uh, it became pretty clear to me that it was important to, to learn that whole vision mechanics side of things. Um, and, and as I say, you know, in terms of light tanks, I certainly like the, uh, the mobility and, and the idea that, um, you know, you're not, you're not, you, if, if the battle is moving in one direction, you, you have the options to, to try and change things, but it is very frustrating, frankly, to play what's often, um, a, a support role. You are so reliant on your team to be able to do things, you know, you, you can certainly change games by by playing well or or not playing well and there are times when you can carry games uh in a light tank um but uh you know if you're down um you know 12 tanks in the first five minutes (laughs) there's not a lot that as a light tank player you're going to be able to to do to retrieve that game (laughs) try Um, to stay alive (laughs) yeah exactly but but you know on the other hand uh in a light tank uh, with particularly with auto loaders, um, you know, if it if it comes down to a close game towards the end, that's really when you have a chance to to carry, and and those are the games that that I find as being really really the memorable ones and the most fun. Yeah. And you know, that sort of you were saying light tanks and and the Barask, you know. So for me, that's that's about camo. It's about vision. It's about you know burst damage to be able to you know, assassinate those stragglers. And that's that's why I tend to focus on on the auto loaders, on the on the high uh, camo tanks, on the on the high vision tanks. What is your game style? I, I have an opinion, but I I want I want to hear what you th- you say first. <laughs> yeah, sure. So I mean I, like I say, and and you know, like I say in terms of um, you know being sort of a, a dread shells fan, uh, I like the scouting role. Um, I like to go out there and spot. I like to get out there and gather intelligence about 
about the disposition, the dispersion of of the enemy forces. You know, for me, the game is is more an intellectual exercise than uh, <laughs> than you know uh, a mechanical click and shoot kind of exercise. So obviously, there there's that aspect to it too. So it's that kind of that chess game that that gets played is is the part that I find the most attractive. So so when I enter a game, what I'm looking to do is I look to see. I mean, the very first thing I do is, you know, what's the map? And if it's, you know, Himmelsdorf, I say, oh, shit. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, but if it's if it's Redshire or, or Muravanka or Prokhorovka or, or some of these more open maps, then I kind of think, oh, you know, maybe there's a chance to kind of do something here. Um, you know, I look at the at the the team comps, um, how many lights are on each side? Am I the only light? Are there five lights? Um, you know, are there wheelies in the game? I don't play wheelies, um, but uh, you know you have to kind of deal with them when they're, when they're there, either on your side or on the opposing side. Um, and and what tier I'm in, you know, am I bottom tier, um, which creates a different set of expectations, or am I am I top tier, um, mm -hmm. when you know a more combat oriented role becomes a little bit more possible. So you know when I when I um, go into a game, what I'm thinking about is what can I do to get those early spots? What can I do to position myself to be able to contribute but still stay alive with the idea being that my my influence on the game is going to be greater the longer I last in the game. Um, okay. And, and what is uh, what what's uh, what are the threats to me on the other side? So those are the kinds of things that I immediately think about. There's a there's a point where you can see the game turn, and I, and I, I go back to the video I did when, with you on I think it was in your Barask, where you could tell that the, there was a turn in the game. Or it was like 1390, sorry. Yeah, there was a turn in the game where all of a sudden you became the aggressor, and that, that's when you were running around picking up the near deads, and uh, you know that's that's kind of how I see the the, the play style. It, your, your play style develops because it, as I think back on more videos that I've done with you, it, it seems to be that, that tendency to <clears throat> kind of just disappear, you know, get the spotting damage, but then you turn on and, and become the aggressor. I could be wrong. Yeah. And, and, you know, I think that's right. I mean, that's, that's from what I've seen of, of what others do, you know, what, what sort of the general advice on lights is, is that, you know, that's, that's a pretty common approach. Um, you, you, your your influence on the game increases the longer the, the game goes on. Your the advantages that you have on vision, in camo, in mobility just get bigger and bigger the fewer the tanks that are left on the map. Um, you know, if you're playing a corridor map, you it's just death to to go out fast and early because you will run into somebody who's got a bigger gun and right. more armor and the rest of it. So, you know, if you want to be effective, you've got to be patient and wait for your opportunities to be able to, you know, when the when there are seams or holes in the in the enemy's deployment that you're finally able to to kind of take advantage of early game, certainly on corridor maps that they're just not there. Right. So, yeah, it's very much about, well, what do I do in the early game to to make a contribution, but to conserve my hit points so that later in the game you're you're able to have that impact i mean you talk about the brass game or the 1390 game you know um it, it's a, a light tank comes into its own when it's able to pick off the isolated when it's um able to play the vision games without fear of getting counter spotted and that that kind of relies on on the opponents being thinned out a little bit but it can be, you know, it can be really frustrating because you can be sitting there, you know, playing that more passive role, playing the the more defensive role, the intelligence gathering role, and just watching your team melt, and then <laughs> thinking, well, okay, now what? Now what do I do? <laughs> and then it just becomes a case of, you know, trying to trying to, you know, farm what you can and get what you can out of the game. But you know, um, a medium tank player might be more in a position to to have impact early on to be able to 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 make the game changing plays early in the game rather than later in the game so right. you know there's certainly drawbacks to to light tank play okay all right well to that i mean what would what advice would you give uh say a fairly new player 
Well, yeah. I mean, huh. I think it's really tough for new players in the game now. Mm-hmm. Um, there are so many well-established players now. You know, I look at my own tanks. I, I, I don't play. I'm not grinding anything. I'm not really looking at new tanks. Um, the tanks that I play regularly, I've got hundreds, if not thousands, of games in. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I've got I've got crews in in f- four, five, six tanks that I play most regularly that have you know got five skills or more in them. And and you know, I just think, oh my God, how's a how's a new player <laughs> supposed to survive in this context? So I guess you know, I guess what I would tell a new player is a couple of things. You know, first off, don't worry about your stats. Turn off XVM. You know, maybe um, one thing I've done is turned off um, accepting messages from anybody except those on my friends list, so that you know I don't get forward into the garage by the by the uh, by the toxic ones. Um, you know, and maybe even turn off general chat and just focus on on your own gameplay. Mm-hmm. Don't worry about about performance. You know, the other thing, because because you're going to have a hard time with it. Um, so if your satisfaction is going to come from, you know, achieving a high win rate or some sort of WN8 number that you've picked for yourself, you know, it's going to be a tough time. But if, on the other hand, your your goals are more about improving your performance and, and getting there, then, you know, um, Watch the videos, watch the streamers, read the forums, read the wikis on the mechanics. Um, stay in games after you get killed and watch what other people do. Um, you know, but just just hang in there uh, and keep going at it. Don't don't think of this as a game where you know the end game content is is unlocking and playing tier ten tanks. You know, when you find a tank that you like and are comfortable with, stay with it. You know, right. play it play it again and again and again until you, you start to get the hang of these things and then kind of stretch out from there as you get more comfortable in 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 a smaller number of tanks at at mid levels i wouldn't say stick it tier one because you know that's pretty pretty i don't think you learn a lot down there but uh you know just don't be in a rush and and don't be impatient so it's, it's a pretty hard message but uh i think that's that's the key i mean what would you say your strengths are uh, your, your biggest strength in in the world of well, tanks. You, you know, I I don't know. I, I I tend to think more about my weaknesses than about. Okay, my then, well, what's your biggest I mean, weakness? Well, I guess my big. I, I I feel like I've got a few. I mean, one is is my impatience. You know, I I do tend to. I mean, you see the videos where I'm able to control my impatience, but <laughs> I mean, if you think back over them. Um, you know, there are a few times when it's like, why did you take that shot? You know, <laughs> why did why did you do that? That was not a good idea. But um, you know, I guess another one is is that um, uh, you know, I, I'm I don't have those those mechanical skills that 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 some other players do. You know, I can't I can't snap those shots off. Um, you know, maybe if I I had the big 27 inch monitor and the gaming mouse and, and all the rest of it i might be able to kind of improve on that but you know i'm never going to be i'm never going to be as good as as some people at that kind of stuff oh, um, <laughs> trust me a 27 inch monitor is not all it's cracked up to be <laughs> yeah. but uh you know i i um um what, what i do hope to bring to the game is is um is a bit more like i say of a of a thoughtful process you know, being aware of the different things that that are going on in the game, and being able to either anticipate or be able to react, or to take advantage of opportunities when when they arise. Um, you know, that doesn't always work. I tend to be um, a bit of a. I, I tend to get tunnel vision. I tend to be focused on one particular thing. You know, I mean, again, you never see it in the videos you, that that you you put up for me. But, you know, way too often, it's kind of like I'm sitting here trying to get a shot on a guy, trying to get a shot on a guy. And then, you know, I don't realize that somebody's come right up behind me and blows my butt off because, you know, I'm in sniper mode and I'm trying to get this shot in. <laughs> and I'm completely clueless as to what's going on around me. So, uh, uh, you know, there's, there, there's some of that. Well, I think we all suffer from that from time to time, right? 
Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, my strength, you know, frankly, just comes from 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 experience. I think I've got a pretty good knowledge of the maps. I've got a pretty good knowledge of um, the uh, the different positions that you can take in the different maps. I've got a pretty good knowledge of you know the capabilities of of my tank and of opposing tanks. So you know, I I just I think my strength is in in being able to analyze what I'm up against and and be able to maximize my utility in in the circumstance. So obviously you're a light tank player. What's your favorite light tank? Well, you know, I am a I am a primarily a light tank player, but I got to say that with some of the changes that have happened, certainly with the introduction of wheeled vehicles and and as I say, you know, kind of post 918 which kind of dates me a little bit. <laughs> I, I have been kind of looking at trying to to spread out a little bit more, but I do I do always go back to the lights and you know, my favorite my two favorite vehicles in the game right now are the Barask, which is, you know, it's not a light according to to world war gaming. But in a lot of ways, it, it is a light. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it doesn't have camo on the move, but in all other respects, it may as well be a light tank. Though that gun is would be a pretty impressive one for for light tanks. Um, and and then there's my beloved AMX 12T, my mm-hmm. my one and only three marked tank, <laughs> which uh, which uh, which I really really enjoy playing. You know, that's my go to tank when I really get bent out of shape and. You know, I'm on a long losing streak. Um, that's the one I always go back to. But then, you know, I've been I've been experimenting a lot more with, um, you know, I, I unlocked a long time ago the Bat Chat 25 TAP, mm-hmm. and very unsuccessful with it. But you know, after having played a lot more auto loaders, I've kind of gone back to it, and I'm having a lot more success with it. Like, nothing to worthy of sending into you yet, but um, wow. but it's it's feeling a lot a lot better. And I've been fiddling a lot with um, some of the auto loaders, the the Czech auto loaders, and others. Um, the the American T seventy one DA, which uh-huh. is a tier seven light tank auto loader. So I, I am kind of focusing on the auto loaders, but I'm also um, looking looking at some of the the, the regular single shot light tanks, LT four three two. Um, that uh, the Russian tier eight premium. Right. Uh, you know, these are all tanks that I really like. I got to say, I mean, when you look at what I do, um, I'm playing a lot of premium tanks. And, I, you know, I do that for a couple of reasons. First off, um, you know, some of those premium tanks are just, frankly, you can't make no bones about it. You know, they're better than their tech tree alternatives. Right. The AMX 30, uh, 1357 is just a better tank than the AMX 1375. You know the uh, the LT four three two is better than the LTTB. Mm-hmm. Um, the Barask, I don't even know what the tier eight French medium would be. I, I don't even <laughs> think there is another one. I mean, you know, it, it just puts all these other tanks in the shade. And again, you know, I don't feel like I'm good enough that I can be a successful player with bad tanks. So <laughs> I tend to, you know, I tend to focus on the ones that that I'm successful in, and that's often the premiums. Well, and also, you know, it, playing premiums means I never have to worry about the credit economy or anything else. Oh, true. So uh, it's, uh, you know, it's it's a luxury that I indulge myself in. Do you have a, a favorite map? Favorite map? You know, you'd think as a light player that I'd be saying Prokhorovka, Prokhorovka. <laughs> but, you know, frankly, I you know, I find Prok kind of boring. I, and I got to say, you know, as a light tank player, I get on Prok. And the shit you take from everybody if you don't go on the one two line, <laughs> it's like, what are you, why aren't you, you dumb scout? Why aren't you out there on the one two line? And it's kind of like, yeah, this is what I do for fun. I go and camp in a bush for 15 minutes. All right. Well, you guys, you know, fail to hit what I like for you. you know? <laughs> so, so, you know, proc, proc can be fun, but I actually like proc better when there are at least a couple of lights in the game so that I don't feel like I'm supposed to be that one who goes and does the one new line right. and I can do some other stuff. But, uh, but um, Malinovka is one that I really like both encounter and, uh, and uh, um, uh, the standard battle. Um, Redshire, 
Westfield, really, you know, any kind of map where, where there's some open terrain, even steps, you know, given that the, the, the open fields are, are deaf, but even then, you know, there, there are at least some opportunities to move around the map. Uh, um, so, you know, those are the, the, the kind of maps I like. Um, you know, you can predict probably the ones that I don't like. <laughs> well, there's Himmelsdorf. Uh... <laughs> yeah, yeah. And the one thing about playing my 12 T is I end up in like Wide Park or Provence, which, mm. you know, when I get those, I really don't like. Um, the nice thing about my 12 T is that, you know, I actually really don't mind getting into a tier 8 game and a tier 6 tank in my 12 T. Because yeah. you know, I, I still think I can be very successful. And of course, uh, the the rewards of being two tiers down are are really high. Right. Well, you, you're going to get a lot more experience uh, fighting upper tiers, right? Fighting above your weight, yeah. basically. <laughs> yeah. So, um, what do you find yourself working on consistently? So, so the things that I'm trying to really get better at right now are, well, first off, I'm playing a little bit more high tier games. Um, you know, uh, the other thing about playing light tanks is is that, um, you know, finding yourself in a tier 10 game can can really be difficult because the maps are so small and the vision saturation, like every tank in the game has got 440 or more meters of view range. Mm -hmm. So, you know, your ability to spot and be unspotted in those kinds of games, regardless of the map, is just so much more difficult. And of course, they've all got, um, you know, laser beam guns that can hit you on the move from halfway across the map. So, you know, one one thing that I'm, I've been working on is I'm playing a lot more, as I say, of the Bat Chat 25 uh, AP, as well as my AMX 1390. So I'm trying to I'm trying to find ways to be effective in in higher tier um, in higher tier games. Okay. Um, another thing that I'm trying to do is. Um, I'm trying to dial up my aggression a bit more. Um, I do like the scouting game, but I also feel like I need to uh, to be a bit more aggressive. I think there have been opportunities where, you know, if I had been, if I had taken that chance and gone in and, and you know, I might've been able to, uh, you know, save a flank or turn a tide or keep a couple of allies alive that might've been able to, to change the course of the game. Um, and then I guess the the last thing I'm I'm always working on is is my patience and you know just the uh, you know don't do that stupid thing regardless <laughs> of how, how tempting it might be don't take that shot you know I mentioned Zevin earlier in the in the interview mm -hmm. and you know I don't think he's he's present anymore but I just I can hear his voice in my head saying you're a light tank your gun is a pop gun. You know, why are you <laughs> risking your life for 140 points of damage now when, you know, you should be lighting for the for the TD who does, you know, 500. Right. Don't be stupid. So, you know, I, I, I kind of I'm trying to I'm trying to work on that and that and and not um, not being quite so tunnely as well. You've commented on my play in a few of videos where you're wondering why I'm in sniper mode so often. And yeah, that's a habit I've got to break. Is is I've got to be, you know, much more conscious of the mini map and and frankly of the the view around me. Yeah. Like I still get surprised when I shouldn't be playing with any of the new equipment. Well, yeah, I mean, some um, a lot of my favorite tanks are are below tier eight, so I can't use the CVS on, for example, my twelve T or the thirteen fifty sevens. You know, on the 1390, I've got the, the, the commander's vision system in, and it is making a difference. But, you know, it's not as game, at least at least for me so far, it's not been as game changing as, as some people seem to make it out to be. Mm -hmm. Though I have noticed, and again, this is something that I kind of want to investigate further, is that um, some positions with CVS that used to result in no lights do result in lights now. So, you know, for example, just going back to proc, um, I find that with CVS, I can actually light stuff on the one, two line back at the other end of the map near the red line from, um, from the middle ridge without mm -hmm. having to actually be, have to be on the one, two line. Oh, okay. So, you know, that, that introduces changes 
to the way that you can kind of play certain maps because you can you can light stuff without having to necessarily from places where you weren't able to light things before and that can give you some more options okay but um the other the other thing that i did is um um i went back to some of my uh lower tier medium tanks like um uh the cromwell or the um the skoda uh t25 or others that could never let um mount vertical stabilizers and i've gone back and put um the improved rotation mechanic system on those and i found that that that's made a big difference especially on because because you get a bit of a three four um it improves um uh in the same way v stabs do it improves um, the bloom on movement and rotation, but it also improves turret rotation and hull rotation. Mm -hmm. So the tanks feel a lot more agile. So I found that actually quite uh, quite interesting. Um, you know what what some of the new equipment can actually do for lower tier tanks. So Is... can, I, can I take advantage of one more thing just to talk about sure. light play just really briefly? Yeah. You know I get a lot of stick in chat. And and I've seen it on the forums as well as a light tank player, you know, playing tracked lights and, you know, the team saying, you know, they're, the, the other side's got a wheelie. Why aren't you dealing with that wheelie? You know, why, you know, that wheelie's wrecking us. You damn light tanks. Why aren't you doing something about that wheelie? <laughs> well, you know, light tanks can't deal with wheelie <laughs> any better than anybody else. Uh -huh. You know, we can, we can outspot them. We can out camo them. But when it comes to killing them, you know, um, our guns don't have the alpha. They don't have the pen. They they generally don't have the decent gun handling statistics. Uh, you know, if you want to kill a wheelie, do it in a medium. <laughs> and, well. and, and, and frankly, going one on one in a you know an AMX uh, thirteen ninety or 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 something like that against a wheelie, you know, it's an auto pen for their HE rounds. Yes. They tear up light tanks. They love one-on-ones with light tanks because their HEs go through us like butter. So <laughs> all of you medium tank players, all you TDs out there who are bitching about light tanks not countering the wheelies, you're the problem, not us. <laughs> you deal with it. All right. Well, middle-aged noob has laid down the gauntlet. <laughs> Nice. No, I I completely agree because I've tried to do it even in my 432, right? You know, LT 432, and that's to me that would be a light tank that at least has the ability to try and keep up with the damn thing, right? Uh, but you know, we don't have the the auto aim that they have. It, it's you know, you can't hit these things. Yeah. Well, yeah, and and in return they hit you without any trouble, and they pen every time. Yeah, but but. One thing, Benzie, if you if you one thing that I've had a lot of laws with on the LT four three two is that thing weighs close to twenty five tons. Mm -hmm. And if you're able to hit a wheelie with one of those, if you're able to ram one of them, right, it's game over for the wheelie. <laughs> I, I've I've now trained um, controlled impact on my LT four three two crew, <laughs> and I hit an EBR ninety for seven hundred. <laughs> Uh, is there anything in the game that 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 frustrates you? Well, yeah, I mean, uh, more than... I think all the usual complaints. Like, <laughs> uh, you no, know, I there there wheelies do frustrate me, but I pretty I, I've come to to terms with it for the most part. You know, dealing with wheelies is really about keeping them at at range mm -hmm. um, when you're in a light tank, so that you know. Um, you can play vision with them. You can outspot them. You can out camo them. Hopefully, your allies will take them out. But you know, it's also possible to to you know to do to camo snipe them. You know, I, obviously, it takes uh, a bit of luck and a bit of skill to be able to do the leading. But you know, there are ways of kind of dealing with them. Three RDs in a game, M44s. That that I find really really frustrating. The the RD mechanics, I'm I'm not a huge fan of. You know. Sure, as a light tank, I rely on getting a lot of my experience by um, by uh, spotting for others. But you know, I can live with not having so much hard in the game. <laughs> um, but I guess, but I guess the biggest frustration for me is actually um, the toxicity in the game. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you see it in the forums, but you certainly see it in chat. 
you know, you're talking about earlier, you know, what advice you would have for newcomer players. Well, you know, turning off and ignoring all the vitriol and the abuse that's out there, you know, that, that, that's got to be the first thing. Cause, um, yeah, the, the, this game is full of, of jerks, frankly, and maybe that's true of other online games as well. I don't know. I don't, I don't play any others, but, uh, but there's a lot of, there's a lot of salt out there and a lot of it is totally unnecessary as well. I mean, um, we were all there once. I mean, I think back to when I first started playing, you know, I had a WN8 of 400, you know, um, you got to have, you got to have patience and understanding for this. Can't be about, uh, can't be, yeah, the, the toxicity kind of really tilts me. I guess, is there, is there anything that, that, that you'd like to say to, to the, to the crowd, uh, before we, we, we wrap this up? Well, you know, what I'd like to say to the crowd is, is to thank you, Bonzi. Like, I think I really appreciate for what you're doing with these videos, with your channel, with, uh, you know, your efforts online. Um, you know, I think you're one of the people that's trying to make this uh, a better game and uh, a better game for newcomers. So really appreciate your efforts and I hope you keep them up. Oh, I appreciate that. I do. I do. Middle age. Uh, you know, it's, um, it, it's guys like you that, that helped me get this started. So, you know, a uh, shout out goes to you and, and, and the other viewers that have, that have helped me get this going. Well, middle age, I appreciate you coming by. I appreciate you spending some time with us and, and giving us your thoughts and, um, you know, keep those videos coming yeah uh, as far as i'm concerned you know whenever uh, there's a light question i'm gonna i'm gonna send people to you so uh yeah you know, that's just what you seem to be very good at i'm impressed with your play in it and you know you keep up on that barask so great cheers all right take care man